So we're back at the Aklawa Prairie Restoration Area. I've done a video on some of this. Now we're going to take a left fork up here, which will be new. Um, but uh, anyway, this this video is after an argument with my wife. Let's spin around and just get the trail. Uh, you know, the liberal mind and the conservative mind are just two entirely different animals. And uh, I, I don't remember my wife when we got married being so, you know, liberally minded. And, and well, you know, of course, she thinks I'm dense. I think she's dense. Uh, you know, we'll see who's right. But uh, let's just take it all way, way back. This will be probably a long video. Uh, just going to give you my history um, because this is really about the uh, the coming financial crisis okay and why I believe uh, what I believe uh, and I think we're all gonna be in a world of hurt and I hope I'm wrong I really really hope I'm wrong but uh, I think it's gonna be devastating I think you're gonna see I know we're in a real estate bubble and I believe that we are in a stock market bubble and uh, you know, it's it's the whole system's just going to come crashing down, and then they're going to have to do maybe a Bretton Woods or because the dollar the dollar will no longer be the reserve currency. It's just in my mind, there's no doubt about it, and uh, that's going to mean you know us importing goods is going to get a lot more expensive. So you think inflation's bad right now, and we may see hyperinflation, and that would be devastating. I mean, think of being Zimbabwe or uh, Venezuela. I was in Brazil when they had their hyperinflation, and it's it's a terrible, terrible thing. And we've put backed ourselves into that corner. And I say we, you know, the people we elected did it to us. You know, they're idiots. They're all idiots in my mind. But uh, all right, so let's go back to the year 2000, okay? And this was pretty much the beginning of the end for the United States because we had the dot-com bottle bubble. And, uh, you know, up until that point, I wouldn't say we were fiscally responsible, but, uh, it, you know, it wasn't out of, totally out of control. And, uh, you know, we, we did let, you know, a lot of that fail. I mean, because that's, you know, that's the nature of the capitalistic system is you have to, you have to let things fail, reset. And, uh, you know, some of them survive, some of them don't. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have a world to hurt with that whole uh, dot-com bubble. And uh, we didn't spend, you know, billions and billions of taxpayer money bailing everything out. Uh, you know, let things uh, take their natural course. That's what you got to do uh, in a free country. Which we, we're not free no more, I can tell you that. Not with the censorship and everything that's taking place. But uh, so anyway, I, what I did, and this, I'm not suggesting you do this. Oh my God, this, this is a really stupid thing to do. And some of it worked out and some of it didn't. But I took out a loan for my 401k because I was scared. And I bought into a bunch of silver. And, uh, I don't remember if I picked up any gold or platinum back then. And, uh, you know, so for 20 years I've been paying to store that in a safe place. And, uh, you know, so who's, who was right and who was wrong? Well, I picked that up uh, for $4 an ounce, the silver. You know, and uh, I think we're, we're bouncing between 20 six and 30 right now but i have a feeling that's going to reset and and if i if what I, if i'm correct about the financial situation uh, all those precious metals are going to go through the roof um so anyway we'll see what happens uh the other thing that i did that was turned out didn't turn out very good i said it you know sometimes I, i'm wrong right i bought some real estate uh, a couple years later uh and i you know, we paid 50, I'll just give you the numbers, we paid 53000 and then for every year after that, they were hitting us up for homeowner's dues on the property. It was just a piece of land. I didn't have a house on it. And a beautiful piece of property. I loved it. My wife hated it. You know, that's like, like I said, I, I wanted to be up on a ridge. I had this, we had the, would have had this beautiful view of, a, of Cherokee Lake. And uh, it was going to be awesome. I mean, and I was going to have a, you know, three-car garage with a boat and build the house myself. Um, but you know when the so let's let's bring it up to 2008. All right. Now here's 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 where you got to use your common sense. Okay. Um, so I remember in 2006, 2007, 
see what we did on the hike last time is we went this way now we're going this way so uh anyway uh up until 2006 2007 you know i just remember conversations and you know you're so busy I, at that time i was working for a living with a two-hour commute to work two-hour commute home i mean there was just no time to really you know uh, i don't know if, i don't know if youtube existed back then um, but you know you you know in your gut that something is way wrong you know something's way wrong when those housing prices because I, I was talking to steve i'll never forget him he was making about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year whereas i was only at that time making about 85 uh still good money i'm not complaining and uh he uh I, there were these 400 and 400,000 starting in the 400,000 houses that were they were building just across the street from where we were working and i looked at steve i said steve could you know on your salary at 150,000 could could you afford something like that and he said no no i wouldn't even want to try kirk he says that's just insane i says i I said, but there, people are buying those up like candy, man. I said, I don't even know where all the money... How many people have two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand dollar $300,000 jobs? You know, I, he says, I, I can't figure it out. I don't know what's going on. And also, there was this uh, this golf course. I remember, it was, uh, I'll give you the name of it, Gateway. And uh, they were putting... You know, it was a real, I actually liked the golf course. and uh, But they put in all of these houses around the golf course... And uh, so a lot of people from Detroit were moving, you know, into those houses. And at that time, you know, D Detroit was just a wreck. You know, like a wrecking ball had gone through there. So I'm thinking, well, how in the world did all these people make enough money to afford these houses in the golf community? You know, when I know that if they're in Detroit, they more than likely just had minimum wage jobs or even even uh, just slightly over Uh but uh, they were buying them up like candy. And I'm just like, man, I can't believe how this housing market is just booming, right? Well, obviously, boom, 2008 hit. My, uh, the price of my house in Dearborn went from, uh, well, $140,000 to $40,000. That's how big that bubble burst. And then, you know, rather than allow, see, the banks are the ones that set that up. They had all that derivative market, and uh, they were doing some really shady stuff. And so what did they do? They used our taxpayer money to bail out the damn banks for being stupid, you know. You don't bail out people for being stupid. Just let them fail. With, you know, they were worried about the whole financial system crashing, and you should have just lit it. Because guess what, you know, a little bit of pain back then is going to be... Uh, a lot, it would have been a lot better than the, the massive amount of pain that we're going to get now. Well, there's a vehicle up here. I would have never expected that. So anyway, that's, uh, that's, uh, so that brings us up to 2008. Now look at that. You know, if you had a, any common sense whatsoever, you would have known we were in a housing bubble. And, uh, you know, I just didn't have the financial savvy back then to know how to play that, you know. Because I, you know, you, I would have loved to have done what those people did that made millions upon millions of dollars because they bet against the real estate market. And how you do that, I don't know. Somehow they were shorting it or buying puts on something, maybe just on the ETFs or whatever. I, I don't know how they did it uh, to this day. I guess I could watch some YouTube videos. But uh, so, you know, what, what did we do? Well, we went in with Dodd-Frank. We were going to regulate the uh the banks and make sure they didn't do it again we don't want them to do that again oh my god no no so we, yeah well over the years uh, we lifted all the regulations and the banks are at it again i mean except this time it's a hundred hundred fold worse this is going to be this is going to be just obliteration i mean I, you know We've, you know, with the, because the, the real estate bubbles right back, you know, they put all them derivatives and everything out again. I, you know, the government just let them do it. They're not even regulating them, you know. They're, in fact, they're in cahoots together. You know, Jamie Dimon met with Biden and, you know, they were probably talking about, oh man, we're really going to steal a lot of money from the American people now. You know, this is going to be great. So, uh, you know, that's, that's where we stand. So you got the real estate bubble. Now, how, you know, people are asking, you know, how is the stock market going up? You know, this, this is another common sense one, right? You know, you've got 750,000 people a, a week filing for unemployment. I mean, the, the economy is just 
wrecked. There's been a wrecking ball taken to it. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna cut the phone off. I don't wanna get this on the video. And, uh, cause I, you know, try to keep people and businesses out. I don't want, you know, some sort of copyright infringement or a suit, cause you know, they might not agree with my views. So we'll, we'll pick up here in a few. So let's, let's get back to uh, um, the uh, conversation about the uh, economic crisis that's coming, you know. Years ago, you know, 2008, we printed billions of dollars. And, uh, and then it became trillions. I didn't even think we could do that. I thought for sure the whole system would just come crashing in. You know, and at first it was, it was 17 trillion and then 20 trillion and then 23 trillion. I mean, these are unfathomable numbers. You know, use your common sense, people. And now, you know, they're just, you know, Obama and the Democrats just approved another 1.9 trillion. You know, we're doing crazy stuff. We're rejoining the, the World Health Organization who, you know, did everything wrong on the pandemic, you know. There was not one thing that they said that was correct. They didn't even call it a pandemic until March or April, you know, when it was obvious it was in multiple countries and Italy was just getting wiped out. So anyway, but I'm, I got to focus on the, the financial crisis. So, you know, look at look at what's going on. OK, you've had this tremendous melt up in the stock market. Uh, the economy is just trashed. Uh, there's homeless on the streets. Uh, now, here's a question for you. You gotta use your common sense. Why do we have barricades around the White House? They're gonna say, ooh, it was the insurrection. Insurrection, my ass. That was no insurrection. Nobody even had a gun. You know, now there were some people there that were crazy, for sure. But, uh, and the one guy that got hurt, the uh, officer, supposedly, he had a heart attack. And uh, we still haven't heard anything about, you know, who shot the woman that was there. Uh, you know with an investigation there and, and so you know, what did they do? You know, they, they pulled out the National Guard which Trump offered to them by the way And this is where the liberal mind I mean when you try to explain to them that Trump offered the National Guard and uh, you know One of my liberal friends he's going on about how Trump called for them to invade the, the uh, Capitol But he didn't do that. He was he was a miles away just giving a speech when the whole thing took went down you know, and he said, let's peacefully and you know, I can't remember his exact words. Let's peacefully march down to the, the White House and make our voices heard. So, you know, I, it's all I mean, you have to understand Pelosi. And, and this is where you get with the liberal mind. I don't understand. Pelosi is the one who's in charge of the uh, capital security. OK, so to me, she should be impeached. OK, because she didn't she didn't put up any security, I think. You know, and okay, Kirk, conspiracy theory. This is where my wife thinks I'm whack. I think the whole thing was a setup. I think it was a setup, and here's the reason why, okay? Uh, because now they got the National Guard troops around the Capitol building, but, you know, and then, of course, the, the, the media is going along with the whole thing. Ooh, March 4th, there's going to be another invasion. Yeah, that, that really went down, didn't it? You know, and those of you who listen to the mainstream media, that's what you're about. Oh, now, now we're getting rumors that there's going to be another attack on the, on the building. When? You, you said it was going to be March 4th. That didn't happen, you know. You said it was going to be this date. That didn't happen. You know, so the next one is, oh, it's going to be two months away. Oh, okay, so let's keep the troops there for two more months. So why are the troops there? It's obviously not to prevent an insurrection. I think we're a lot closer, people, to the economic calamity where the uh, rug is going to get pulled out from underneath the dollar. And we're, they're calling it the Great Reset, okay? We're going to have to move into a whole new monetary system. And that transition is going to be chaotic. And it's going to be painful. And there's going to be pitchforks on the for white on the white house lawn and on capitol hill and i think that's what they're preparing for they know that once the american people feel this pain because that means pensions are gone that means social security is gone you know that means you're paying you know not just five dollars a gallon at the pump which by the way did i predict that i told you it was going to go it went gone from a dollar 99 to 280 here in florida and it's just continuing to go up <clears throat> I'm seeing prices on everything going up. So we've got, I mean, they, you know, the media might tell you, oh, there's no inflation. 
I mean, are you feeling it in your pocketbooks? Are you, are you using your common sense to see what's happening? You know, this thing's accelerating. You know, you can't, you can't just keep printing and printing and printing. You know, I, I love it when Johnny Bravo goes, the, the Fed went burr. <laughs> and, and that's another frightening thing. You know, the Fed used to be separate from the Treasury. But with Janet Yellen up there, you know, because she was involved with the Fed, and she's now his tr Treasury Secretary, they, those two entities are pretty much merged. You know, you might as well just say that there is no Fed. It's just the Treasury. And uh, and they're still, you know, still propping up the banks, of course. Um, hey, check it out. Another dock up here. We'll get out on that. And uh, so that's kind of kind of it on the financial crisis. Um, and then I'm going to, I want to make what I'm going to call a resilience video because I've been doing those, you know, talking about resilience and usually I do it as a motorcycle talk, but I'm enjoying being out here on this hike. I'm just going to do it on the, on the hike here. So that'll be the second video. And then of course I'm making just a hiking video because, uh, you know, there's really does not a lot of change in the trail. So, but I'm still going to at least have a 10 minute hiking video. But man, in that, look at all those birds. Wow. Sometimes you just got to pause for just a second and take a look at things. So we've come, come all the way from down that. All right, so that's it for the financial video. I just think that you, you need to prepare. And you say, well, Kirk, how do you prepare? Okay, well, you've kind of missed the boat on silver, gold, and platinum. And those are going to be, uh, there's a word they use, un unattainable. They're going to be unattainable here soon. Because uh, once the big boys get involved, that supply is going to be gone. And you'll never be able to buy another gold or silver coin. So if you haven't, if you haven't bought up any precious metals, and you're just screwed, man. Uh, I've bought a ton through those Sprite ETFs. And, uh, and of course, like I said years ago, I, I bought some then. And uh, over the years, I've I kind of added to it just a little bit here and there. But, you know, I I, I, I watched it for 20 years, and, <laughs> and it just barely broke $16 from, from the $4 that I paid originally. That ain't but a bad profit. You know, I'm a, I'm a tortoise, man. I am not a hare when it comes to investing. I just, uh, I'm just trying to preserve the wealth of my family. You know, and you've missed the vote on real estate. That was another asset that you needed to get. Uh, so I don't know where you go with the money other than I would take it and put it into things like I'm doing. You know, anything you think you might need to survive an economic calamity that, uh, you know, where it's just going to crush the dollar and it's going to be insane trying to get food and everything else that you can do. And that's that's what you need to be. And that'd be a good place to put your money. Those are still assets. You can barter with a can of soup. You know, suppose you want some some flour. Okay, here, I'll give you this can of soup. You give me some flour. Oh, you want my million dollar bill here? Because uh, it's worthless, you know, uh, for that, that uh, flour. Oh, you won't take that million dollar bill because we got hyperinflation. So these are these are things what, what you got to be thinking about. And my wife says, you're just an alarmist. You're just a crazy person. Okay, so I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, what, what do I care? I got, well, we're going to talk about resilience and that's going to get into all the things that I've done over the years to prepare for what I think is coming. Uh, that'll be a whole different video. All right. So I'll, I'll post that up as the, the link from this video. You guys have a good one. That's enough on the financial crisis. I think I've said my piece. I've made my case, okay, from 2000, what happened there, what we saw happen in 2008 when we all should have had some common sense and been looking around and saying, my, how are these real estate prices so inflated i mean why is a guy making twenty thousand dollar a year buying a three hundred thousand dollar house how was that possible and it wasn't of course it wasn't all those people got hurt the banks took them to the cleaners and then the taxpayers bailed out the banks so now we're seeing it all again all those regulations that went in to stop the banks from being stupid they're gone the banks are being stupid again that's what they do because they make they make you know the, the oligarchy they're going to have everything. All right. You're just going to, you're going to work and pay rent and be happy. That's, that's, that seems to be where we're heading. All right.